Kevin, Budget 2021 is called a recovery plan for jobs, growth, and resilience. How would you characterize it? Look, well, I guess we could stick with that characterization. It's, uh, it's massive. I mean, that's how I think everybody will probably end up characterizing this uh, budget is historic. The test, of course, will be down the road to see if any of these uh, measures uh, do what they're supposed to, uh, if they do. And I think there's, frankly, if we want to be optimistic about it, reason to think that they will, then we can feel good about this budget despite the magnitude. I mean, the, the, there could be some, there will be some sticker shock, no doubt. But uh, I see a lot of these investments uh, in coming into the, the, the right kind of places. That's the things we need to do to, to really boost the economy. The uh, budget suggests that deficits are lower than forecast. Uh, they're on the decline, as a matter of fact. There's a declining debt to GDP ratio. Some uh, optimistic numbers for Canada's economic recovery. What's your take? Indeed. Well, I think I, I keep thinking back to something I read at the very start of the crisis. Uh, there were some economists that said, look, uh, it looks catastrophic and there's certainly reason to think it could be. But the people look back to the SARS uh, uh, outbreak uh, back in the 90s and uh, and some assessments of that uh, period showed that, in fact, households, businesses were far more adaptable than, uh, than the economists predicted they would be. So I think that's what we've actually seen. So the, the, a lot of the numbers, are certainly at least uh, up until now, we're now on the verge of another, um, you know, kind of shaky situation with this third wave in Canada and, and many of the provinces uh, confronting what look, appear to be a, a few more uh, terrible weeks, if, if, if not longer than that. But putting that aside, the numbers going into, into the, current, um, the current state of things were, were, were pretty good. Um, I think that suggests that uh, that uh, the the economy writ large was uh, was adapting to this situation, and so growth is much better than we thought. That means revenue is going to be higher. So there's every reason to think that uh, that the deficit projections of, uh, of a few months ago would uh, would be better, and um, and you know they they are. As you mentioned, uh, we are in this third wave. Did business get out of it what it needed? Did small and medium sized business get out of this budget what it needed? Well, my experience with um, with at least the, the small and medium sized business lobby and most business lobbies is they're they, they're always looking for a little bit more. Um, my assessment on the surface would be that they got probably enough. Whether they got what they needed, I don't know. I guess they I guess they'll they'll, they'll tell us in the uh, in the days ahead. Um, but they did get an extension of a lot of the emergency programs. Uh, that's the government saying two things in my mind. This one saying, okay, look, we, we're, here we are on the verge of a third wave, so it's no time to start uh, reeling these programs back. Um, and then I saw some, some evidence that the government's prepared to sort of lean into the recovery phase. Now, we talked about how the, the, the recovery is, is stronger than we thought. There's uh, lots of money in the bank. Uh, households have, have done okay, and they've not had a lot of opportunity to spend the money. So there's there's a lot of cash sort of sitting out there uh, waiting to be deployed. So a government might have decided to hang back and, 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 and let that money do the sort of the short term recovery bit. Um, but we saw the government lean into that a little bit more. And I think that's positive because what they're trying to do there is keep more businesses uh, or as many businesses afloat as absolutely possible. And thinking back to the Great Recession, a mistake that policymakers made here and elsewhere is they didn't do quite enough during that period. So companies failed. And then when the recovery really did start to happen, there just weren't enough companies uh, around to, to take advantage of the upswing. So I'd like to see this time uh, an effort made to, to keep more of those companies alive, uh, more lifelines, more opportunities to, uh, to, to, to bridge sort of to the, to the other side of this. And um, it looks like the government at least is keeping that in mind and has given some, uh, some other bridges, I guess we, we'll call it, for, uh, for companies to get to the, uh, the other side of this crisis. There's a focus on uh, rebuilding um, Canada's resilience or making us more pandemic proof, I guess you could say, with uh, money's earmarked for bi biomanufacturing, life sciences. What's your take on that? Yeah, I think it's necessary, Larissa. I mean, it, it'd be nice to think that the, the private sector would take care of that kind of thing. And I think we assumed a couple of decades ago when we sort of uh, took a step back and uh, embraced a, a smaller government, I'll say, or a less uh, activist sort of approach to, to economic policy that, uh, you know, by way of lower taxes, free trade, that sort of thing, that, uh, that the private sector would decide, um, you know, how best to deploy 
uh, money, investment, that sort of thing, and would leave us uh, well positioned going forward. But, you know, as we've seen through the last year or so, I mean, that didn't happen. I mean, I think among the, the most embarrassing moments, uh, I think, for for us as a country was the, the recognition, the realization that, uh, that, you know, we fell behind the vaccine race because we couldn't produce our own. The companies that, uh, that have, uh, uh, you know, been ahead on this are those who had uh, manufacturing capacity. They had manufacturing capacity because the government uh, stayed involved in those sectors. Um, and we just, uh, we just haven't been smart enough um, in setting up the policies and the investment strategies to make that happen. So, this is a course correction in my view, and, and one that uh, we've, we're learning right now, of course, is, is def- desperately needed. What was missing? Uh, what was missing? I, I'll say this. Um, I mean, I, I alluded to earlier my, you know, relative uh, ease with sort of the trajectory of the, of the finances, but what's missing is a, is a serious fiscal anchor. I think you and I have talked about it before. Just uh, And by anchor, of course, I mean something that, you know, the government can sort of put in the window to say, we're serious about getting the, the debt down to a manageable level, uh, getting the deficit back down to a manageable level. The government says is doing that. The government has a trajectory that, uh, that says the deficit, for example, will be back to you know, 1% uh, of GDP within uh, five years or so. I mean, that's not terrible, but, um, but that's basically, uh, we're, we're, we're forced to take the government's word on that. And uh, I think the issue is, or the issue that uh, the Trudeau government will confront is, I don't know that it has a lot of faith, uh, or there's a lot of faith in the uh, Trudeau government to deliver uh, on just simple promises. I think there's prob- there are probably some investors out there that would like to see something a little more concrete. Um, and Christian Freeland didn't offer that up today. She simply said, trust me. So I guess we'll see if people trust her. <laughs> 